preschool friends. How are you? I hope that you're doing well. If you haven't done story time with me before, my name is Miss Lisa and I get to do all of the story times at Worthington Park Library. But right now, while we can't be in the library, I'm doing them right here on wherever you're watching this. Yeah. All right. So this week we are going to talk about some big science ideas. We're going to talk about the idea of seasons and especially the season that we're in right now. Do you know what season we're in right now? Spring. Yeah, we are in spring right now. And we in Ohio, where we are, um, that's the season that we're in. So you might notice some things about spring. I would like to know, what do you see when you go outside in the springtime? Do you see some flowers? What about some new little green leaves on the trees? Oh, what do you hear? You know what I hear right now? That's a spring sound. That's my neighbor mowing. Yeah, that's something we might hear. You also might hear, maybe you hear some bees buzzing. You might hear the wind through the trees. Yeah. What might you, what else see? What other senses do we have? We talked about things you might see and things you might hear. What else do we have? We have a sense of smell. What are some things you might smell in the springtime? Can you think of any? Oh, you know what I love to smell in the springtime? Grills. I love smelling people cooking outside. I do. I also love the smell of fire pits and oh, that smell right after a rainstorm. I love that smell. Now we talked about things you might hear, see, smell. What are some things you might taste in the spring? Hmm. Oh, one of my favorite tastes in the spring comes pretty early in the spring, asparagus. Have you ever had asparagus? Asparagus always tastes like spring to me. Another thing that I think of when I think of taste in the spring is lettuce, fresh from the garden. Ooh, a yummy salad with some lettuce. I also really love strawberries, but they're a little bit later in the spring. They're not quite ready yet. I wish they were, I would love to go strawberry picking. So those are some things you might taste in the spring. Did you think of something I didn't think of? Okay. Now what about, what else might you have? So we had hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting. What else? Touch. What are some things you might feel in the spring? Can you think of anything you might feel? You might feel a breeze come by. You might feel the sun shining on you. Oh, isn't that lovely? Yeah, what are some other things you might feel? You might feel the grass on your feet if you're walking around outside barefoot. Yeah, and the temperature is gonna be different, isn't it? Some days it'll be rainy and maybe a little cooler. Some days it'll be warmer. We might have snow. You never know, huh? All right, so spring is the season that comes after winter. So in Ohio, we usually are in winter, December to February, and then we transition into spring a little bit, and then pretty soon we're gonna be getting into our next season. Do you know when our next season is? It's summer! So we'll do winter, spring, summer, and then we'll go into fall, and then back to winter. That's all of our seasons for the year. All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit specifically about spring today. Let's go ahead and read one of our stories. You're gonna hear a lot of that lawnmower. I'm sorry. All right, this one is called Mouse's First Spring. All right, and this book is by Lauren Thompson. Oh, and thank you to Simon and Schuster for letting us read their stories. Oh, you know one thing I love about Seasons and Younger Friends is that all of it feels brand new 
to littler kids. And so what they get to see and smell and feel this season, they probably don't remember last year. So it's so much fun to watch our kids learn those things and to use descriptive words so that they start to hear them. All right, so this one has a lot of descriptive words and mouse is learning a lot about spring. Are you ready? One windy spring day, mouse and mama went out to play. There in the grass, mouse found something glittery and flittery. What could it be, wonder mouse? Look, said mama, what is that? A butterfly! Then whoosh, blew the wind and fluttery buttery the butterfly went away. Do you see the grass getting blown by the wind a little too? There under a leaf, Mouse that found something slithery and slimy. What could it be? Mouse wondered. Look, said Mama, what is that? Do you know? Oh, it's a snail. Did you think it was gonna be a worm? Mm -hmm. Then whoosh, blew the wind and Heidi insidey, the snail hid away. It's a very windy day for Mouse, isn't it? There on a branch, Mouse found something, feathery and plump. What can it be, wondered Mouse. Look, said Mama, a bird. Then whoosh, blew the wind and dip, flip, flap, the bird darted away. Yeah, I was actually gonna show you my neighbor has some little baby birds, but today when we went out to check on them, they had flown. There by the pond, Mouse found something green and peeping. What can it be? Wondered Mouse. Look, said Mama, what is that? A frog. Good job. Then whoosh, blew the wind and splishy splash, the frog hopped away. There in the dirt, Mouse found something pink and wiggly. What can it be, wondered Mouse. Oh, what is it now? Look, said Mama, a worm. Then whoosh, blew the wind and squiggly squeeze, the mouse slid away. There on a stem, Mouse found something sweet and petally. What can it be, wondered Mouse. What is that? Look, said Mama. A flower. Then whoosh, blew the wind and rumply bumply, mouse tumbled away. Oh no, did you think the flower was gonna roll away? Me too. Oh poor mouse. Then all around, mouse found something soft and cuddly and oh so cozy. What can it be, wondered mouse. What is it? What is that? Smooch came a kiss and ooch came a hug. It's me, said Mama. Spring is here, little mouse, and I love you. All right, you did such a great job with that book. Very nice. You know, when we were reading it, I got to thinking, I know a song we should do. Do you know a song about five Five green and speckled frogs. Do you know that one? Do you want to sing it with me? All right, let's give it a go. Ready? Five green and speckled frogs sitting on a speckled log eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. So we had five. Now there are four green speckled frogs. Glub, glub. Good job. Nice job knowing that when we take away one of the five, we have four. Are you ready? Four green and speckled frogs sitting on a speckled log, eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are 
three green speckled frogs. Glob, glob. Great job. So when we had five and we took away two of them, we have three, right? Three green and speckled frogs sitting on a speckled log, eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are two green speckled frogs. Glob, glob. Good job. Two green and speckled frogs sitting on a speckled log, eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now, if we had two and we take away one, now there's just one green speckled frog. Glob, glob. Ready? He's going to jump in too. One green and speckled frog sitting on a speckled log, eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. He jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are no green speckled frogs because they're all in the water, aren't they? All right, good job. So we took away all five of them, didn't we? They all jumped in. All right, now I have another big idea I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about why we have seasons. We talked about what we see and feel and smell and taste and hear here in Ohio. But did you know that the whole wide world does not feel the same way all the time? It's true. So part of the reason we have seasons is that we live have you seen one of these? Do you know what this is? Oh, besides old, it's gonna be very creaky. Yeah. This is a globe. This is what our world looks like from super far away. Yeah, if our world was this size, it would be, well, not exactly like this, because this is older. But do you see, now the line is a little bit in the wrong spot, but there is a line, not that you can see, around our real world called the equator. And the equator is the part of the world that gets the most sunlight all year long. So our seasons are caused by where we are on the earth and the sun. So how close we are to the sun. The closer we are to the sun, the warmer the weather is. I know this is kind of a big idea and it might be a little bit for the bigger kids, but I think my little kids can learn this too. So where we are in the world changes what our seasons look like because our world is not boop, straight up and down. It's actually on a little bit of a tilt. So this would be straight up and down and our world's on a little bit of a tilt. And so the axis, that's that middle part there. Yeah, depending on where you are, you might get more sun or less sun and when the world is, so say the world looks like this and my window is the sun. Do you see what's happening over here? What's happening on that side? It's dark, isn't it? Yeah. So if you were down here on the back, you would not get any sun. If you were up here on the back, you wouldn't get any sun. Guess what that is? That's nighttime. Yeah. So it's nighttime on this side and it's daytime on this side where the sun is coming. Now, it's also getting more sun on the southern hemisphere right now, on this part in my imaginary world. So down here is getting more sun. Up here is getting less sun because it's pointed further away from the sun. So even when it's daytime, up here is not gonna get as much sunlight as right here would, okay? So when we're up here and facing away from away from the sun, it's going to be a little cooler. Now, when we rotate around the sun a little bit and we're faced more like this, now this side's gonna get more of the sunlight and warmer and longer days. And down here is going to have cooler days and um, they will be shorter too because they'll be in the back a little more often. So they'll be further away from the sun. All right, I don't know if that made much sense. I don't think I did my best job describing it. But I also wanted to show you, I reached out to some friends who live in a lot of different places all around the world, and I had almost 90 responses. And I knew I couldn't tell you about what every season feels like in all 90 places. So we're just going to go over a couple, okay? Right here, see this dot? That's where we are, that's Ohio. 
Yeah, and so we talked about what the weather is like in Ohio. It's getting warmer, but we still have some cold days. We can't plant all of our stuff yet because it's still a little bit too cool. Um, we might have a lot of rain. We haven't had snow in a couple weeks, so hopefully we're done with that. Um, but I want you to look. So this on this globe, this dot, I don't know if you can see it super well, is not super far away from us, is it? But guess what? This dot is in Arizona. And my friend who's in the Phoenix desert area said that it is spring there too, just like we're having spring. The cactuses are all blooming and she says it's beautiful and that the desert's actually pretty green right now. So, cause they've had more water than normal. So she said there's a lot of green and that's what she sees. She sees the desert cactuses blooming. She says she feels hot because it's over 100 degrees already. Wow, that's 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Some of my friends sent me it in Celsius. So she says it's over 100 degrees already, but you don't hear very many bugs yet. It's still pretty quiet for the bugs. So that's some of the things she told me about the that area in the desert. So those are not far away, but it's a very different feeling. I don't have any cactuses around my house. What about you? No? All right, now let's go a little further away, but we're still gonna stay on the same hemisphere and we're gonna go to Scotland. And my friend Hannah in Scotland said that it is springtime there she said all the flowers are in bloom and it's absolutely beautiful. You can see and smell all the flowers starting up. She said it's really bright green. Everything's that really springy green that you can see. And she says the birds are super loud. She said you can hear the birds all the time. All right. Now another friend of mine, kind of similar to here. Whoa. Lives all the way down here in South Africa. Africa and Annika in South Africa told me that here it is fall. Wait a minute. But it's spring for all of us up here, isn't it? But down here, she said it's fall. She said they're starting to get into the late fall flowers. So the flowers are starting to be done. Um, she said the fields are all full of really tall golden grass because it's dried out. And she said that it's nice hoodie weather. So she likes to wear a nice warm hoodie, especially in the evenings. And that, guess what? It gets dark at six o'clock. It gets dark at dinner time. All right. So that is what's happening in South Africa. And I think I have two more places I wanted to show you. I do. <gasps> Down here because South Africa was pretty far south, wasn't it? And Australia is also pretty far south. And my friend Sammy in Australia, she's in Sydney, said that it is fall there too. So look at these two are both in fall. And my friend Sammy said that it is sunny and warm still, but the weather is getting a little cooler and the breezes are getting a little chilly. She says that it's good jumper and warm pajama weather. Jumpers are sweaters, yeah. So she likes wearing her sweaters and warm pajamas because it's a little cold. And she said rain is not very often. It doesn't happen very often, but that the sunrise and the sunset are absolutely beautiful. She loves to see those. And my friend up here in Hong Kong, Yenny, she said that it's summer here and that the flowers bloomed all the way back in February. So you would see, smell, and hear very different things in all of these parts of the world, wouldn't you? All right, that's a really big idea, but I thought it would be so neat to learn about what the seasons look like in other parts of our world. All right, let's go ahead and do, oh, let's do a story where you're gonna help me out. Are you ready? Oh, we gotta move. I'm taking too long. This is called Tap the Magic Tree by Christy Matheson. I don't know why I'm hearing jingle bells upstairs. All right, and this is a Harper Collins book. Ready? There's magic 
in this bare brown tree. Tap it once. Turn the page to see. Are you ready? Can you tap an imaginary tree for me? I'll tap it here. Oh, what did it get? What is that? Tap again. We're going to do it four times. One, two, three, four. <gasps> now tap again. Even more. So we've got a leaf for every tap. Ready? How long should we tap? Should I be done yet? All right. Let's see what happened. <gasps> oh, look at all those. It says rub the tree to make it warm. Oh, good job. Let's see. Did it warm up? <gasps> what did it get when it warmed up? Can you tell? It got little buds, little flower starts. It says touch each bud and see what forms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ready? Oh, what formed? Do you see? Good job. Give the tree a little jiggle. All right. Can you shake? Oh, that's it. Now make your fingers wiggle. Ready? Do you have your fingers wiggling, wiggling? Brush away the petals, swish, and blow the tree a tiny kiss. Oh, Whoa, did you see what was happening? Where the flowers were, what are we starting to get? It's hard to see. We're starting to get little green apples. And now, they're big red apples. We're gonna shake the tree. Can you give a shake? Give a better shake. Good job. <gasps> plop, 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 Curve, plop. Knock, knock, knock on the trunk, then stop. Are you ready? We're gonna knock on the trunk. What do you think is gonna happen now? <gasps> Whoa. Pat the leaves, be gentle, please. What season do you think it is now? Yeah, I think this has us into fall now. <gasps> oh, beautiful. Aha, now blow a wishing breeze. <gasps> what happened to the tree? Clap your hands to bring. Can you clap? Good job. The snow. I'm not ready for that. Okay, be patient. Oh, it's so hard to wait, isn't it? Hmm. Wait, don't go. What do you think we're waiting for? Close your eyes and count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. <gasps> what happened? Magic. It begins again. All right. Aren't those birds precious? All right. You did a wonderful job with that story, too. Let's go ahead and do rain on the green grass. So get out your tickling fingers. We need to move. I know. Can you tickle your feet and say, rain on the green grass? And then get your head. Rain on the trees, rain on the housetop, make a good house, but not on me. Good job, let's do it one more time, ready? Rain on the green grass, rain on the trees, rain on the housetop, but not on me. Good job. All right, we have one more story I'm gonna do. It's called When Spring Comes, and it's by Kevin Henke's. Or Kevin Hanks. I should check on them. All right. And this is another one from Green Willow, HarperCollins. Before spring comes, the trees look like black sticks against the sky. But if you wait, spring will bring leaves and blossoms. 
that's what it looks like right now, is it? What else do you see on that page? Do you see those little rabbits? Yeah. I see a bird and some butterflies too. If you wait, spring will make the leftover mounds of snow smaller and smaller and smaller until suddenly they're gone. Before spring comes, the grass is brown. But if you wait, spring will turn it green and add a little flowers. If you wait, an egg will become a bird. A seed will start growing. Spring comes with sun and it comes with rain and more rain and more rain. Look at all that rain. Do you like mud? Do you like puddles? I hope you like umbrellas. Before spring comes, the garden is just dirt. Remember looking at my garden the other week? Just looked like dirt, didn't it? And empty. But if you wait, spring will push green shoots through the dirt to fill up the garden. I'm starting to get my lettuce. Yeah, I have a lot of green lettuce out there now. And spring will call out the pussy willows and new kittens too. Spring can come quickly or slowly. It changes its mind a lot. But when spring is finally here to stay, you will know it. There will be buds and bees and boots and bubbles. I love all of those things. There will be worms and wings and wind and wheels. Do you hear what he's doing? Birds and buds and bees all started with b, b, b. And worms and wings and wheels all starts with w. w. You will feel it and smell it. You will hear it. When spring is finally here to stay, you might think you are done waiting, but you are not. Now you have to wait for summer. All right, did you see what they're waiting for? Strawberries, I know. It's almost time. All right. You did a wonderful job with those stories. I hope that you enjoyed them. I had some ideas that you could try at home. I'm going to make them really fast this week because grown-ups, we have enough going on, don't we? All right. One of my ideas that I thought you might want to try is if you wanted to do the egg carton scavenger hunt, if you didn't do it a few weeks ago, just take an egg carton. Grown-ups, you can write some things that we're looking for outside like soil, a worm, a rock, whatever you have. And you could go ahead and send your kids on out to do a scavenger hunt. You could go with them too. I make mine go. Um, and let's see what else. I was thinking it might be fun if you did a spring picture hunt. If you went around and snapped pictures of the things you see outside that help you know that spring is coming or that spring is here. So we've taken pictures of our baby birds next door. We've taken pictures of the buds when they were starting to form on the trees. Um, and let's see what else. Oh, our new stuff that's growing in the garden. So anything like that that reminds you of spring, you can get some pictures of that. I would love to see any pictures of spring you can find. Just put them in the comments with your grown-up's permission, of course. We don't put things on the internet without grown-ups saying it's okay. All right, the other thing that I was thinking might be fun is if you wanted to, you could make a tissue paper flower. If you don't have tissue paper, grown-ups, you can get coffee filters, you can use cupcake liners, make it easy on yourself. It doesn't have to be hard. But what I was thinking is if you wanna fold it a few times so that it has like a nice edge or corner, a fun way to do a tissue paper flower, we're gonna use our 
pincer grip, we're going to use our writing muscles that we need all the time. I know I'm obsessive, aren't I? And we're going to use those and rip the paper because did you know that when we rip the paper, we're building those big muscles? We are. So we're going to rip the paper. Hmm. Didn't work out quite right, did it? But look at this. Kind of looks like a flower, doesn't it? We can use our imaginations. So you can make flowers like that. Hey friends, is your grown up listening? I have a secret for you. On Sunday, we're celebrating Mother's Day. So if you wanna make some flowers for the grown up in your life that you love, that might be a nice idea. Yeah. All right, so you can make some flowers just like that. You saw how long it took me. It did not take long. If you have pipe cleaners, I gave up. I couldn't find my pipe cleaners. If you have pipe cleaners, you could tie them around this right here where it all comes together and make a stem out of that. You could make a whole bouquet. You could. Or you could do it like this and glue it onto another piece of paper and make a card. Yeah, you could do a lot with this. So I have my flower right here. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to write a number on it. Hmm. I'm going to keep it easy on myself. Let's see. Oh, I am not good at writing with tissue paper and Sharpie. All right. What number did I write? Can you tell? What number is it? It's a number one. Well, Miss Lisa, why did you write a number on your flower? Because guess what else I'm going to do? I have a yellow pom pom. If you have some yellow pom poms at your house, you could do this pretty quickly too. I'm gonna show you in live time so you can see that this is a super fast project that you can do at your house. I'm gonna add some stripes and some eyeballs. And I hear my kiddos yelling, so we'll see what's gonna happen here. All right, what did I make? Can you tell? It's a little rough, huh? I made a bumblebee. So what we're gonna do is if you have tweezers at home or chopsticks, um, you can use those to try to pick up your bumblebee. If you don't have those things and you wanna just use, make sure you're using your writing fingers, you can pick up your bumblebees, make a couple of them, and then write different numbers on your flowers and try to give them whoop, the right number of bumblebees. Yeah, this is actually one of my favorite projects to do when we're in normal story times back at the library. Uh, but maybe we'll get to do it, I don't know, maybe we'll do it sometime soon. Okay, so this is one of those things that you can just reuse these bumblebees over and over again, grown-ups. If you made flowers that you laminated, that would be um, easy to reuse too. Um, or you can just use your little tissue paper flowers. All right, I also wanted to see if you started a garden or you planted anything during our garden week, I would love to check in on it and see what it looks like now. So feel free to send me any pictures of that too, okay? Friends, I can't tell you how much it means to me to hear that you're enjoying Story Jaded, all of your feedback on the big feelings last week. I hope that it helped you um, with kind of this weird time that we're living in. And I hope you know that you are very loved that you are missed, and I can't wait till we're back at regular story time, but I'm glad I at least get to do this with you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye, friends.